This next module, we're going to go in and take a look at uh, how we do our discovery and what it does when it comes into discovering what's going on. Okay. So one of the questions, and I, I just want to make sure that um, I address these even though this person said never mind. Um, we, can, you know, we can discover over the management port or we can discover over the network port. And in this case, we find that both of those work really well. In fact, we'll get to this on the discovery here in just a second, but we can discover on all four ports at the same time. So if you want to discover at layer two, and here's the advantage of discovering at layer two. If I discover at layer two, I'm gonna get the MAC addresses of all the devices in addition to things like their IP addresses. I'm gonna be able to see broadcasts that are going out. So with the Etherscope NXG, we have the potential of discovering on four ports simultaneously, our wired and wireless management ports, as well as our Wi-Fi and our wired network test ports. So you could walk in, connect to two different wireless networks and plug into two different wired networks, be able to discover on all those at the same time. The Etherscope NXG does not route bridge in any way, shape or form between any of those ports. So if I have those connected to two different ports, I'm not really, I'm not putting myself in a situation where traffic from one network is going to get over to traffic on another network. I'm able to communicate with those networks, but I'm not going to route or bridge any of that traffic between them. I just want to make sure that that's an important note in there. So I can connect to multiple networks. In fact, let's say I had a network that I couldn't get to with my PC. I could plug the network port into that network and I could plug the management port into a network I could get to. And I could use the Etherscope NXG as somewhat of a jump box to be able to get from one network over to the other network. All right, so let's go ahead and we are going to go with discovery here. We're gonna take a look at uh, what can we do when it comes to discovering our network with the Etherscope NXG and this is where we really depart from what we would see with something like the Link Runner G2. If you had the Link Runner G2, you could do that auto test. But this is where we're going to be able to go in and do that discovery and see what's going on. So in this case, we're gonna start with configuring discovery. How do we go in and configure discovery on here? Uh, we're gonna take a look at our discovered devices. What can we see? How can we filter on those discovered devices? How can we sort those discovered devices? And then how do we save the discovery profile? And again, please take advantage of doing things like saving your discovery profile. This gives you a way to go out and take what you found, save or how you've configured this and save it so you can go back and use that again later. And if, you're, if you've got multiple clients you're working with, you've got multiple sites you support, you don't have to go back in and re-enter all that information again. Really is a huge time saver. So discovering our network, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by going to our discovery app right there. Now, what the folks at NetAlly have discovered is, I love to ask questions and there's always something more I want. No matter what they come up with, there's always another little thing. That, boy, it should be nice to have. And what's really fun is that as the software develops, to see these things coming out. And one of the things that I said, man, it'd be really nice to see is a discovery progress. So in version 1.1, what we see is that up here on our bar up at the top, we've got this little uh, magnifying glass right there, it says 100% in that case, that shows us where we're at on our discovery. So when we start our discovery, you'll see that start ratcheting up. But once we see that hit 100%, that tells us that we are at 100% where we've discovered the devices. Now we're always going out and trying to find more, listening to broadcasts, keeping track of what's going on on the network. But we can go in and set this discovery to rerun periodically. So once the Etherscope NXG has an IP address, and this could be either on the management port or on the network port, wired or wireless, uh, we're gonna start discovering devices. And we're gonna start displaying those devices in here. 
we can see it gives us a name, IP address, uh, here's a DNS name, whatever that name happens to be. Now, this is the really cool piece with discovery, is right here, we see that this says Android 3, there's an IP address, and there's OnePlus, that's probably my OnePlus phone. And the neat thing with this is that we, in this case, we may not have even been connected to the wireless network. But what the Etherscope is doing is it's discovering the MAC address, the name, the IP address, all of that on the wired side. Then it's scanning the wireless side and it's finding the MAC addresses of the wireless devices. It's finding out which access point, which BSS ID and which SSID that's associated to. It's taking and combining all of that information. It's taking what it discovered on the wireless side by scanning. It's taking what it discovered by doing active discovery on the wired side, to merging all that together. So I will keep going through and re-emphasizing the fact that we do not have to be connected to the wireless network to be able to tell what's going on and who is who on that wireless network. Yep. So for the most part, <laughs> we're gonna be able, <laughs> excuse me, we're gonna be able to go out and do a pretty good discovery just by plugging this in or connecting to that wireless network. However, if I really want to get in and see what's going on, there's a few other parameters I'm going to need to configure, and that includes things like extended discovery networks and my SNMP information. So if I come, out, come in here, I click on my little menu icon up there, those little three bars, it now gives me where I can come in and do some settings. So this is where I can change my discovery settings, my problem settings, my TCP port scan settings and some general settings, I can get to my about. So I'm gonna go into discovery settings in here, and this is where I can start configuring my discovery. Now, the Etherscope NXG supports SNMP version one and two and SNMP version three. So if I'm using one or two, I'm gonna to need to give it my SNMP community strings. If I'm using SNMP version three, I'm gonna to need to provide it with my credentials. It's gonna be a user ID and a password to authenticate, and then to retrieve the data, I need to give it another password. So uh, I could come in, configure that. We're not gonna use SNMP version three today. We're gonna to stick with one and two. So in this case, I would come in and there's my community strings. My community strings are exactly like so many other things where we can use the same community string in multiple discovery profiles. It is so important. This is just such a key piece because it applies to so many components in the Etherscope. If you delete one of these SNMP community strings, it will delete it from every single profile where it's referenced. So if you don't want to use that community string in this particular discovery profile, just deselect it, but don't delete it. If you knew that you were never going to use that again, eh, then you could go in and delete that. Okay. A uh, question came in about adding MIBs for hardware vendors. Uh, no. There is not a way that we could import a MIB in here. But here's the thing. The SNMP discovery that this is doing is based on literally decades of development. So what you'll find is that if it supports MIB2, boom, this is gonna give you that information. If it supports the bridging MIB, it's gonna give you that information. There are a lot of vendor specific MIBs that have been rolled in here. Now, if there is a very specific MIB that you need to have supported, it never hurts to contact the Ally Care support team at NetAlly. Tell them, hey, this is a MIB that I think is really important. I'll give you an example. I, uh, I was out at a manufacturing plant. We found out that the industrial ethernet switches they were using re replied in kind of a funky way when it came to doing an SNMP get on the bridge forwarding table. So we were able to go in, do a packet capture, walk the MIB, show what was going on, and you know, we were able to get that rolled into a future version of software. So I'm not saying that you'll never get that in there, 
I don't want to get that impression by saying no, but there is not a way that we could go and compile a MIB in here. However, you could um, talk to them about integrating that. The other thing is, and I haven't looked to see if there's a MIB browser app, but this is one of the things that when we get to Link Live, I'll touch on real quickly, and that is there are thousands of apps that we see that are out here that we can install. These apps are added to the Link Live app store by NetAlly. They vet them, make sure that they're a decent app. If there's a MIB walking app that you find for Android that you're interested in, you can go into Link Live and you can request that that be added. That app can be added in here. And this is the true beauty of being able to run Android apps on the Etherscope NXG. You are not limited to what somebody decided to put into this discovery. If you wanted to go in and be able to walk the MIB of something, add the app in there. And, we, and now you have the capability of running that app. Now in this case, we've got public and private strings. Don't recommend using those in your network. However, having those strings in there allows us to find any devices that are set up using the default community strings. Active discovery ports. So if I come down here and click on active discovery ports, here are all four of our ports. So we can turn those ports off and on depending on what we want to do. So I can say, you know what, I just want to discover on the wired port. I don't want to commingle management port devices with the network or the wired port devices. I don't want to commingle these. So if you just want a profile that's only looking at one port, you can do that. If you want a profile that's looking at multiple ports at the same time, you can absolutely do that as well. <clears throat> We're gonna leave all four ports on there. Now, there's been a few questions about the OneTouch ATG2 that's sitting back there as far as, you know, how does this compare with the OneTouch? So one of the things that we ran into with the OneTouch is the OneTouch was designed to discover a broadcast domain. And to really discover beyond that broadcast domain, we needed to use something like the OptiView XG. That allowed us to do ex our, our extended discoveries. Well, what you find out is that with the Etherscope NXG, we can put in our extended ranges. So I can come in here and put in additional IP subnets I want to discover. So you go, well, how many of those could we put in? As many as you want, as many as you want to type in there. And the beautiful thing is when you save this profile, all those extended ranges get saved and they're available to use in other profiles. All you have to do is check, on, check them. So really cool thing. So how do I add those ranges? Well, I come in and click on my little floating action button down here. And it says this subnet will be included in discovery. Cool. So I go in, I put in an IP address. Now, your Etherscope NXG will put in networks it's discovered. You go, I didn't figure out those networks. Well, here's the cool thing. It figured out those networks because it went out to the router, grabbed the route table off the router. Said, hey, these are the networks I found out there. Do you want any of those? So that way I don't have to type it in. And what it does is it gives me the uh, IP address. It gives me the subnet mask. It says this is how many devices I've discovered on each one of those. Uh, be careful in here about using things like slash eight subnet mask. Okay. Uh, you, you really want to be careful because it will go out and it will ping all 16 million addresses. Mm, that can add up to a lot. So we're going to come in and we can add in an address right there. In fact, we'll add in a few addresses. So let's look at how we do this because I really want to do the live as, as well as showing you on there. So I'm going to go out to my home screen right there. I go to discovery. And we are going to go up here. We're going to go to discovery settings. All right, so we're doing SNMP version one and two. Uh, we're going to turn off three. I don't have any three devices, so eh, no sense doing that. Uh, community strings, 
I really just left mine at public and private. It's me not following the advice I give everybody else, but ah, that's the way it is. Uh, I'm going to leave discovery turned on on all my interfaces. And I'm going to come down here to extended discovery ranges. I click on my little floating action button. Click on here. And I'm going to say uh, 10.0.0.0. Well, or we could just click on this. We're going to say uh, that one, OK. Then I go back. I'm going to hit Add. And this is the type of thing that when you do this initially, you can build a library of all of these. We'll add 10.0. We'll say OK. See how easy it is? And especially if I'm doing the touch screen, right? So if I come over here, let me just switch over there. And I do my touch screen, and I say, oh, well, I want to add one. I'm going to say uh, address. I'm going to say, uh, show me the discovered networks. I'm going to say add 11. And we'll say, OK. Go back. So now I'm adding these in. Well, once they're added in, all we have to do is check them. These are little check marks in the future right over here at the back. Switch over there. And uh, let's add one more. Let me see if 12 is in this list. Okay, I don't see 12. And that's because uh, it's on a different network out there. So we'll say 10.0.12.0 slash 24. Oh, that say that. And we'll put a 24-bit mask on that thing. And I'll go back. Now I've got all these extended ranges added in here. I'll go back. And so we could uh, choose our ports. I'm going to leave all those ports active. And there are a number of other things. We can say, you know, devices discovered through other devices, refresh interval, uh, device health interval. Not going to really dig into those. We don't have the time to do that today. But in this case, what we do see with our refresh interval is this is going to go out and refresh this discovery every 90 minutes. Every 90 minutes, it's going to go out to all those extended networks. Say, hey, what's going on? Still got the same devices out there? What's happening? So now that I've got this configured the way I want it, let's find the cursor here. That little dot can be hard to find sometimes. And I'm going to go back. <clears throat> And I am going to refresh my discovery. Now, I don't have to necessarily do this, but in this case, I'm going to say refresh discovery. I clicked on those three little dots up there. I'm going to say clear and rerun discovery. I just want to show you up at the top. We see that little magnifying glass. It says we're at 10%, 20%. It is going out and rediscovering our network, and it's going to start finding all those devices out there. And... So there we're at 20%, we're at 78 devices, 81 devices, we're up to 60%. Number, the amount of time it takes us to do our discovery is going to be very much based on how many subnets you're discovering and how many devices. Um, there is a question about the uh, limit. How many devices can we discover out there? I know that you know, we can end up discovering several thousand I, I can uh, send a message off here. In fact, what I'll do is we're going to, after we get done with discovery, we're going to take a little break. And uh, I'm going to take some of these that I don't have an exact answer. I've really learned over the years. I could probably make up an answer that sounds good. But I want to make sure that you get exactly the right answer. So I'm going to send off uh, a few emails when we take the break. Make sure that I get a few answers to uh, any of these questions I didn't have an answer to right off. So we've discovered 86 devices out there on our network. So this has discovered those devices not only on our local network, but on those remote networks as well. So our discovery. We now have our discovered devices. Up there, it shows 91 devices. So in this case, what can we do now? I, I'm looking for specific devices. I'm looking for uh, addresses, et cetera. So let's say I had an IP address. I want to know what MAC address, who was associated with that. So in that case, I can use this search. And the search is a very neat feature. And 
I can come in and let's window that. I can come up here to my search. Let's find the cursor. There we go. So now I could just start typing in 10.0.0. Dot, well, we'll say 106. So it says, oh, there's the gold mine PC right there. So what this is, is this is a machine that's got my contact management software on it. So it tells me, hey, there's that gold mine PC. It's running as a virtual machine, DNS address, IP address, MAC address. I can always hit the back button down here, go back to my list of devices. I could do a search and I could say F4 and it's going to show me every device that has F4, say in the MAC address or has F4 anywhere. They'd say, oh, there's a couple of my brother printers. Say, well, how about this printer right here? What, what do we know about that? I could click on that. It's gonna show me some information about that printer. And because that printer has SNMP on it, tells me how long I can see it's been up for 17 weeks. The interface is on there. I can get the information about that particular printer. We'll go back. So we can use that search to very quickly find devices. We could have thousands of devices out there. We can search through there and use that as a way to find those. And I, I really like that search feature that's in there. That was, I believe that was added with 1.1. 1 .1. Um, nice feature to be able to quickly go in and find that device that you're looking for. Let's just, so in this case, you know, I type in 10.0.0.5, gives me five and it gives me 50. Filtering. So you have thousands of devices that you've discovered. You want to start filtering down on those devices you care about. So this is where we can use our little filter icon right here. So we'll click on that on the live one. What this does is it says <clears throat> there are 10 different device types we can filter on. There are, are 10 different IP subnets we can filter on. V6, VLANs, NetBIOS domains, and authorization. So these are all different filters that we can apply. So the goal is we want the Etherscope to discover everything. But we don't necessarily want to see everything. We want to be able to drill down. So let's say that I'm interested in switches on my network. Well, I could come in here. I go to device types, I can say switches. It shows me how many devices we've discovered for each one of these. So if I go to switches, it now says we've applied one filter and that is on switches. So if we go back, these are the switches in my network. I've got switches out there on 10.0.11, switches on zero, switches on 10.0.12. So it's gone across all of my different subnets and it's showing me the switches on those networks. So now, if I wanted to drill into uh, Uta's switch, so Uta works with me. She is across a VPN connection. So it says, here's Uta's office switch. It says that her switch has been up for six days, 11 hours, and five minutes. It's got seven interfaces are up and six are down. It supports these VLANs. Here's some information about that device. So here's the cool thing. I can now come in, go to interfaces, and it shows me which interfaces are up and which interfaces are down. So I could see that interface gig one is up, and that's connected at 100 meg, gig three, gig four, gig five. So I could say, ooh, um, I'm interested in what's on gig three. So I tap on that, and it says, hey, look, you know, it's, that's up there, the connected devices. It tells me the IP address of the connected device. Now I could go to devices and expand that, and it shows me that we've got this device connected there, and we see that it's identified that as a phone. Wow. So we could go in and we could see that that is a grand stream. We get the MAC address right there. That is a grand stream phone that's connected. I'm not even at her office. All I have to do is be able to connect via IP and have the right 
you know, I hate to use that word. I need the read community string for that switch out there. Once I have that, I can tell where things are connected. Now, I wanna go back. I'm just gonna start clicking on the back button, working my way back out to where I was. So all those devices we discover are now available to us on the Etherscope. And up at the top, we see eight of 86. We discovered eight devices that are switches that satisfied that criteria. Now let's say that I was only interested in the switches that are on my primary network here at my office. So I could come up and it shows me we have applied one filter. So I can click on filter again and I can go in and I could collapse devices and I could expand IPv4 subnets. I could say I'm interested in 10.0.0.0. Now those are additive. Now if I selected multiple subnets within a category, within a, one of these categories like IPv4, that would be an OR. So it would say, I want switches that are in this network or this network. So I've applied two filters. So I'll go back. Now it just shows me those three switches that are on the 10.0.0 network. I could go in, I could drill into these switches, see what's going on with those. Now, if I want to back out a little bit, I can click on this and I can say, I wanna remove that subnet filter. I wanna remove that filter, or let's say that I selected numerous filters here. Uh, I don't know how many times I'm gonna do that before I learn, I just need to give it a second. There we go. Now, I could just come up here and click on the filter icon with an X. Boom, get rid of all those filters. So in this case, we've now come in and we've removed all the filters and we can go back and see all our devices out there. But we can filter on all kinds of things. For example, I could say, uh, I want to filter on, uh, Device types, let's see. We could say, I wanna see VoIP phones. That is so cool, I love that. Uh, we could do VLANs, we could do subnets. Start drilling in and taking a look at what's out there. Now, what I'm gonna do is notice that our 36 up there, we're not scanning, okay? So in that case, uh, what that's telling us is because we're connected, uh, we are not scanning our network out there. We're gonna turn that off. We're gonna run just our auto test for our wired network. Now, you notice that because I took that test out that auto test, we disconnected the wired port from our wireless network. And we are now back to scanning again. So what I wanted to show you is that once I do that, I click down here, look at what's, you know, what's open. I can go back to discovery. Now, if I come up to my filter, we see that we get SSIDs, bands, channels, et cetera. Why? because we're not just tied into one particular network. We're scanning through all the networks. So I could say, hey, for SSIDs, uh, show me, you know, like PR home. So now I'll go back. So it shows me just those devices that are on that wireless network. And how are we getting MAC addresses and all this? Because what we've done is we've discovered those devices on the wired side. 
So if you want to be able to filter on, see all the SSIDs, see all the wireless devices out there, do not run the auto test on your wired network port or your wired test port. Just let that scan. Use your management port and or your Wi-Fi port or your wired port to connect up. All right. So in this case, we looked at filters. How can we go in and use our filters to filter down on just those devices we're interested in? We can see that uh, you know, two of the 91 devices in this case match that filter that we set. Uh, the three next to the filter icon shows the number of filters we've applied. We can click on those X's to remove filters. Uh, sorting. So our sort order shows up right above, and it does a couple things. One is it will sort by that particular value or that field, but also it will display that field if it isn't already being displayed. So let's take a look at that on our real network. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go to filter. I'm gonna remove any filters that I've got. I'll go back. And now I'll come in here and I'll say, I want to sort, well here, we're sorting by SSID. So now it shows us each of our SSIDs and who is attached to that SSID. I could click on that and I could say, show, show me problems. Who's got problems? Well, we're not seeing any problems right now. That's good. I could say uh, sort by MAC address. I could say sort by device type. <coughs> so it's showing me Wi-Fi clients. It's showing me you know, some of my various uh, test devices out there. And notice that when we sort by that, it now shows us that field in there. So we could go back in and we could say, you know, sort by name. That's going to give us name. A lot of this has to do with what is it you're looking for on your network. Then you can choose a sort value and, you know, be able to get to that device faster. A really fast way is click on the search as well. So there's a list of all of our different sort fields. Okay? So that way we can organize that. And we can click on our little sort order right there. We can do ascending or descending. So breaking that layer two ceiling, I've mentioned this before, and that is when we find, if we have the wired port linked, but we don't have the Wi-Fi port linked, we'll see that the Wi-Fi port will scan up here. And when it's doing that, it's scanning the devices, looking for all those wireless devices. It's combining that information with the wired side. And I know that I've mentioned this a number of times, but it is such an important piece of how this works. So now if we go to discovery, and I were to say, show me the devices on Netgear 77 5G. Then I were to come in and say, uh, you know, I, I, let's dig even deeper. There's my MacBook. So it's important to note that we see names that go with the wireless devices, even though we're not connected to the wireless network. That's because we're using the wired side information. So if I dig into my MacBook, what we see is we see it's a Wi-Fi client, NetBIOS name, IP address, IPv6 address, MAC address. We get the channel it's attached to, the AP. We can see which SSID and the security information all with having never connected to the wireless network, only scanning the wireless network. So by including the IP subnets of each of the wireless networks in our extended ranges, we're able to break the layer two ceiling for all, each of those wireless networks, again, without connecting to the wireless network. So if I go into an organization, I don't wanna to have to get credentials for every wireless network. I would rather connect to the wired network, be able to discover the devices there, but then combine that with the wireless information I can discover via going out and scanning all of those channels. So now, we've gone in and we've built out our wireless discovery or our discovery in here. And we wanna save all of those extended networks that I did. I wanna save all that information. 
So in this case, this allows me to save that to a descriptive name so that next time I come back to this location, I just open that profile. So I'm gonna go up to my menu. I'm gonna to go to my discovery settings. I'm gonna do save as. Oh, boy, we left that in a hurry. So let's go here and take a look at this over here. So I've got my discovery, so I come up here and I go to discovery. I go to my discovery settings. I come in here and I got my little save icon right there and I can hit save. I'll hit save as. And we're gonna say, uh, we'll say OfficeNet Bootcamp. Now, if I came in here and I hit load or save, I hit load. Now it shows me which profiles I've created. And I could load OfficeNet one, and that would load in those settings. I could also go in here and use this as a way to delete different settings. Whoop, and I deleted that previous one right there. So we can use the load as a way to manage those different networks as well as load those up. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'll hit save. Now, let's say we wanna go in and build a brand new profile. So we could come in and I could go to my extended ranges and remember, we do not delete these because these could be used in multiple profiles. So now I have the option of duplicating, deleting. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I could say uncheck, 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 uncheck. And we, will, we could add in one in here. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's go to our discovered networks. We're gonna add that one in. So now I've added those two, but I've unchecked these. By unchecking them, they're not deleted from any previous profiles I've created, but I'm not gonna discover those networks in this particular discovery. <clears throat> so now I could go back, I could go to my discovery, I could refresh my discovery, I could say clear and rerun. Now, the difference here, clear and rerun, wipes out anything that was in that discovery database and goes out and does a new discovery. If I do just a rerun, it's going to leave those existing entries in there, but just reinitiate discovery. So now we've gone in, we've done our discovery. I could always come up here and go to discovery settings. And I could go to save. I could hit save as, and I could say, not DMX, DMZ, I'll hit save. So now I've saved that profile. So we can, now we've got that one. We could just keep creating as many profiles as we want.